Hey guys, my name is Matsumi Ohm, and today I wanted to go over how to play as Zarya in Overwatch. I feel like she's one of the least understood heroes in the game right now, because admittedly, she's fairly complex. The result of this is that a lot of people, I find, gravitate to some of the easier used tanks, such as Reinhardt, Winston, and Roadhog. I feel like this is a bit of a mistake. Once you start to understand her strengths and weaknesses and how you should use her appropriately, she's honestly one of the best offensive tanks in the game. Once you and your team are starting to synergize together really well, you can perform some of the most disgusting damage on Zarya and also absorb an insane amount of damage as well. And so to start things off, and the reason why Zarya is a bit more complicated is that her entire kit revolves around her ability to place a shield on herself and on a teammates. These shields will last for a a maximum of two seconds, making them situational, adding on to that challenging factor, or until they absorb 200 damage. Now, the caveat to this, what makes it even better, is that it actually absorbs all damage done to the player if the shield is active. Now, I realize this might sound a little confusing, but to give you a clear example of this, if an enemy Junkrat activates his ultimate, it's flying towards you, it's about to explode right in your face, if you activate your shield on Zarya, it will do no damage to you at all. If the shield is active and any damage that does do, even if it's over the 200 limit, it absorbs all of it completely. And so if you're good enough and you realize that a massive explosion is about to happen, either a D.Va ultimate or a Tracer was able to place down a sticky bomb on one of your friends, if you're good enough, you can actually save them from certain death because of her shield. Uh, the next thing, and the reason why I have fallen in love with this character, is that the more damage that you absorb with your shields, either on yourself or on your teammates, the more damage that you're going to be able to output with your primary weapon. Now this isn't just an insignificant increase in your damage output. Oh no, no, no. Hopefully today's video has demonstrated that when you are fully charged, you turn into a god and you're able to smite every other hero that you come across and you're going to have no problem winning those firefights. This is the reason why I think that Zarya truly is one of the best offensive tanks in the game because she's very tanky. She has a lot of health behind her, but when you do get fully charged, you are able to melt every single other player that you come across. Now, the tricky part to this is getting to the point where you are fully charged. I've had a lot of teammates that were completely clueless on how to synergize with Zarya. Either they would never peek their head out, or when they did, they would try to avoid damage as much as possible. And while in most situations, if you didn't have Zarya, this would be the right way to play as a squishy character. You don't wanna, you don't wanna leave yourself exposed. You don't wanna take damage if you don't have to. But if you're not being at least a little aggressive with a Zarya on your team, you're really not gonna get the full potential or at least the damage potential out of this tank. And so my main recommendation is to watch out for teammates that are playing as heroes that synergize really well with Zarya. I know this might seem obvious for some people out there, you always want to have a team that synergizes well together, but it is especially true for this hero. If you have a Winston or a Roadhog, for example, they are amazing combinations with Zarya. What I love about Roadhog is that not only will he be able to act as that frontline tank just absorbing damage like he normally does, but because he's, he's that prime target that everyone shoots at because he is so massive, he's a perfect bubble target. As soon as he rounds the corner to fling a hook out, if he's successful or not, they're probably all going to shoot at him, and you're going to get a lot of charge on your primary weapon. Uh, another thing I recommend is to take it sort of slow the first time that you get into a battle. Either you just die and you're getting back into the action, or this is the very first battle of the match. Don't just rush in balls deep and expect to do well. This is a mistake that I see a lot of newer players make because they expect that they're going to be able to absorb and be a beefy tank like something like Reinhardt or Winston, for example. But then when their shield is gone, they're going to die very, very quickly. And because they don't have the damage output behind them, they're not going to be very successful. And so what I like to do is slowly build up my primary weapons charge, either giving shields to my teammates, going in myself and doing some pot shot damage against the enemy team, and then uh, falling back a bit. Once I'm confident and I got like 70% charge on my gun and I've got my two shields ready, that's when you can get much more aggressive. Of course, this isn't, gonna, this isn't gonna be true for every single round. Sometimes it's gonna be unavoidable. Sometimes the enemy's just gonna charge on in and there's got nothing that you can do about it. But if you can play it right and you can play it smart, that I find is the best way of handling and uh, using Zarya in most situations. Uh, as for the weapon that she has available to her, you can either use her short range laser beam or the energy grenade launcher. 
you probably noticed that for the most part I just charge on in and use the, the, the laser beam it's very consistent it does a high amount of damage and it also doesn't go through your ammunition very quickly if you do go against a target that's way out in the distance though let's say someone's trying to snipe you as Hanzo or Widowmaker or you're fighting against someone like a Tracer or a Genji that is being really annoying and jumping around everywhere then that splash damage of the energy grenade launcher might be the better choice just know that that energy grenade launcher goes through ammo like hotcakes it takes I think four charges before you have to reload and so that can leave you vulnerable so just take that in consideration uh, and then finally we have her ultimates Admittedly by itself, it's not all that impressive. Uh, essentially what it does is that much like the energy grenade launcher, it will fly out of the weapon in an arc and then any enemy that is near the impact zone will be sucked into the vortex and left vulnerable. If you're by yourself though, you probably want to hold on to this. You might be able to do a little bit damage and it might CC the enemy. It might crowd control them so they can't run or move away. But if you don't have any teammates that are able to take advantage of all of the enemy being in one location, it's probably going to be a waste of time and a waste of your ultimates. This is the reason why earlier I said team synergy is as important and paramount to Zarya because you do want to have the interaction going on. Once you're able to pull off one of these maneuvers though, you suck them on in with your ultimate and then a Pharah waltzes on up and just unloads her ultimate all up on their face. It is one of the most magnificent things that you can experience in Overwatch. It is glorious. Uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about really quickly before I end today's video are her counters. Pretty much anything that can shoot you at a distance is going to be difficult to fight against. Widowmaker, Hanzo, Soldier 76, Pharah. Because you don't really have any long range killing potential, I mean if you're really good with her energy grenade launcher, you might be able to do some damage, but she's not really the best for those types of situations. Uh, I do want to mention really quickly that you are really good at countering McCree. Everyone right now is pretty upset with his flashbang fan the hammer combo, especially when you're playing as a tank. And while he can still pull it off on you, if you're quick enough and you activate your shield, uh, the flashbang is not going to stun you at all when it's active, and the fan the hammer is going to be absorbed by the barrier, and you're going to be able to melt his face off. So if you're having a hard time dealing with the Kree, I highly recommend that you play as Zarya. Uh, but yeah, guys, that is about it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and maybe learned a couple of things. Personally, if you can't tell, I love playing as this character. She is a little challenging. Even I struggled with her at the beginning. Uh, but hopefully, this will give you the confidence to go on in or try her out. Because once you get a handle on her, I really do believe that she is one of the best offensive tanks in the game right now. Uh, but yep, yeah, until tomorrow, have a good one and take it easy.